Boom. This is live round with no hook, which is the live Q&A. This is round six, so we have done this five times before. Some of you have, uh, may have seen it uh, once or twice, but man, we get the most uh, incredible questions and are able to put out some incredible content answering those questions uh, here live. These questions can be about anything. They can be about business. They can be about sales. They can be about starting a business. Uh, they can be about uh, social media, or they can be about my luxurious beard. So typically, I mean, you know, given your message, obviously we all op operate in different arenas, but, yeah. um, you know, given your message that you're trying to get across, uh, oftentimes I see that when, when I'm met with pushback personally, sometimes it throws me off my game. Sometimes it kind of takes me away from um, kind of the end goal in the message that I'm trying to deliver. Yeah. And I notice that a lot of times it's nerves that get the best of us. What are some of the ways that you kind of ease those nerves when you maybe don't feel so confident when you're met in some of the pushback? And how do you kind of carry on from there to kind of finish out the message, what uh, especially that? when that person's not always open? Sure. But what, is that, what does that pushback typically look like? Are you talking about like in a, um, in a sales uh, environment? Yeah, let's say in a sales, yeah, let's say in a sales arena, um, yeah. if, if it's, product context so um given maybe how you're trying to sell a product to, to somebody who doesn't quite see the value in the product but of course as a salesperson you've always kind of eliminated that for them and found your uh your point to make with them how, how do you how do you stay on topic how do you stay kind of giving them that value and, and keep feeding them um good information so that they buy in yeah, so I mean, it's a, that's a really good question. Uh, I think the first thing I would say is that confidence to me only comes from preparation. And so those, those situations, when I ever get in those type of situations, I just always know that I, that I certainly didn't prepare enough um, because that to me is what gives me the confidence to go in there and not have that um, that feeling of like, Oh crap kind of moments um, <laughs> yeah. when you feel like you've fully, fully, fully prepared. Um, but minus that let's like move on. Okay, great. Whether you prepared or not, you're still going to have situations that arise uh, where you're going to get some pushback, some objections and how do you overcome those, but stay to the point. Um, you know, for me, it's all about that trying to figure out the the greatest need or I guess pain point that you can try to solve for that person and and really honing in on that and so like by that objection whatever that objection may be or whatever that pushback is trying to dig a little deeper on that and figure out where where they're actually coming from because so get to the root I like that yeah get to the root of it because you know until you figure out what the real issue is someone may give you some pushback and it may be on pricing or maybe on this or that or maybe some type of objections the the hardest ones are always you know that they need to think about it right and so it's, right. Not, it's not that they really need to think about it there's something specifically that they're not sure about and that's what you really need to figure out in those situations and so it's posing to me it's always about asking questions the right uh, asking, questions yeah right. It's, yeah it's all about um asking the right questions but um you know, with our sales process with, with life insurance, it's, it's a very high, uh, fast paced, uh, highly transactional uh, environment. And one thing that we always say, so we give a, a group presentation, then we meet with people one on one. And we always say, you know, with our, with our system, that the sale is made in the group presentation, and that we're really just taking orders when it comes to the one on one. And so when we're sitting down with somebody one-on-one -on -one and there's any pushback, it just tells me that I didn't do a great job uh, in the group presentation. And I think mm -hmm. for us, you know, it is a numbers game uh, in sales. And for us specifically, just speaking off of experience, I, I kind of, I know what my conversion or my close ratio is going to be. And I don't let every single person that I'm sitting across the table from, um, I don't let whether they buy or don't buy really affect my mood, affect my um, viewpoint, affect my, um, my actions whatsoever, because I just know 
that if I'm seeing the right amount of people and I'm saying the right things that ultimately my conversion and my close ratio will, will work out. And then it's just kind of the law of averages. And so mm -hmm. it makes it to where I don't get so tied up when I do get pushback. Um, quite frankly, with, with our cycle or with our sales cycle, um, if someone has pushback and they sound as though they're not interested, my job really is just to get them out of the room as quickly as possible because I know that there's somebody else that is interested that every second that I'm wasting with someone that's not uh, is taking precious time away from someone that is. Interesting. And so I don't, we don't, I mean, there's, there's a couple ways that we combat some, you know, frequently asked questions or objections or pushback. Um, but beyond that, it's literally just getting them out and getting somebody else in uh, that, that doesn't have that objection or has already made that buying decision um, prevalent. So I think that's a lot of the mindset of it is, is knowing that like when you go into a sales scenario and you know, you've got X number of meetings afterwards and X number of people to meet with, it takes all the pressure uh, off of that particular conversation. And I think so many salespeople don't do the work on the front end and don't have enough prospects and don't have enough potential clients or potential customers that you can feel the desperation when you're Correct. sitting yeah. when they're sitting across the table from you. They that person can feel that you really, really need to make this sale because you're one of two people that person has to talk to this week. Versus if they had mm. 19 people to talk to this week, they'd be a whole lot more laid back because they really don't care if you buy or not because they know out of the 19 that 12 are going to buy and seven are going to say, you know, they're not interested. And so I think that for, Very interesting. that for me controls a lot of our mindset is just from the activity that we do on the front end to know that like, Hey, whether this person buys or not, I don't really care. Um, and that, and there's a lot to be said. There's a lot of power in indifference on a sales on, on from coming from the sales person. When you can literally tell them, Hey, whether you, whether you buy or not makes completely no difference to me. And I can say that honestly, because I've got 20 more people to meet with that hour or that day. And so I just know that there's going to be a certain percentage that do buy. And so whether that person does or not, doesn't, is not particularly important to me. It's just getting a, getting them to an answer one way or the other. So I can, right. get, on, so I can get on to the next person. Um, people can sniff salespeople from a mile away and they can sniff bad salespeople from further. Um, and so when they sit down with you, and they truly feel like you don't really care if they buy or not, that you just want to be, be there to provide a solution for their need. And if they need it, that's great. If they don't need it, that's great. Um, there is a whole lot of freedom that comes in that conversation. And it, it puts down a whole, it puts down a lot of walls uh, and barriers. I think that a lot of people are putting up when they're so desperate to make that sale. You know what I mean? I like that. Like, it's like a disassociation factor of it. Psychologically, it breaks the barrier between you and them, but it also, it also kind of uh, bridges the gap between you and them as well. That's a yeah. very interesting way to look at it. And we, we tell them in, the, in our group presentation, we tell them, look, if you need insurance coverage for you and your family, that's great. If you don't need it, that's great. Either way, I could care less. Yeah. And we put that on the front end because we don't care. Um, I mean, well, I and you've laid the groundwork and you've done the preparation. So yeah. for you, there's no void in that area. It's, it's just that simple fact of you either need it or you don't. And if you don't, that's great, but I've got plenty of people that do. So exactly. I like every, that. And every second, like that, and every second that I spend with you is a, is a second that that other person's getting less interested. Right. You know, Hey Austin, this is Tyler Harris, man. How are you? Hey Tyler, doing great. How are you today? I am doing well. Do you have a awesome. uh, question for us here? We'll get you live on Facebook. Yeah, yeah I sure do. I actually, awesome. I was, I've been an insurance agent for about a decade now. Nice. And uh, I, when, the, when the slump hit it, uh, about 2008 or so, I jumped into the social media business. Mm. And uh, long and short of it, my parents stayed in the insurance business, and my mother is about to uh, hand off the Medicare business to me. And I'm, I've been watching your content, and I just, I'm curious of how you would maybe you know, build a Medicare business uh, using social media. Man, that's a, that is a great question because obviously yeah. um, there's a different demographic that you're dealing with there. Um, Absolutely. With, with Medicare. 
And I think it's it all gets back to just you know using that phrase and terminology from Gary Vee, but reverse engineering your end customer and just really, really honing in and targeting on what do they actually look at? What do they actually do? I mean, they're using social media. So sure. it's, yeah, just, it's like one of the biggest growing demographics. Yeah, yeah. So it's just reverse engineering that and figuring out what those people are looking at and how that you can actually reach them with the message. And so, oh sure, yeah, whole different neighborhoods. Yeah, so I think that's, I think a lot of people do a really really bad job when it comes to okay. really narrowing their interests on their target audiences for their ads. And so I see. I think taking a really long hard look at what are the interests that my actual people that I'm trying to reach actually have, and then trying to really narrow those down and, and go all in on on those, but. Um, also, just catering your content towards um, those particular people as well. I mean, that's that's, a, that's the the entire success of our business has been based around getting extremely narrow in our niche, and then just understanding those people better than they even understand themselves. Um, so, I gotcha. think, so okay. I think the that's, more that's huge. yeah, I mean, the the more time that you can spend around those individuals. And figuring out what are their needs, what are the questions that they have, what are the problems that they're dealing with as it relates to your product, and really trying to put out content that that provides a solution to that, or that at least piques the curiosity or interest uh, to those people. But um, to me, it's just the ultimate form of respect to really spend that time and get to know those people, um, and to be able to cater your message in a way it's 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 to me it's as though you know you're speaking english versus german and you're trying to cater, sure. cater your message since you have a german audience that cater your message to where you're now speaking german so that they can actually understand it you know sure um, yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah and so i think it's just it's a it's a longer approach but it's a more careful and it's a more respectful uh, approach because when you figure that out uh, and you start speaking their language the man, it's awesome. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't come across as a salesperson at all because you're speaking their language and they're, they're able to come sure. to a quicker. You're the trusted advisor now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you become, it's almost as though you're one of them, you know? Right. So, right. Yeah. That's a good awesome. Question. Man. Hey, thanks a lot. That was a great tip for uh, some organic growth, which yeah. I think that, you know, everyone who's in sales is really trying to, that's the mind that everyone's trying to tap is where's my organic growth, you know, yeah, no or to, does that, or does know, it be even, out there and be the charlatan <laughs> or does it even exist anymore? Um, I think that, right, I right. think that it's going to become further and further about really knowing your audience for it to exist. So. Absolutely. Hey man, thanks a lot for your yeah, call. You and uh, I will talk to you. Right, soon. Thanks, thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Bye.